What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overload here. We're going to talk about Matt C Maxine in his video here today. So I didn't want to do a spoiler filled review of the movie. I'm not going to bother doing that. But what I am going to do is go over a very big crucial aspect that I kind of talked about a bit in the comment section with a few of you in my review. I'm going to talk about a crucial aspect that shouldn't have been removed that I was expecting to see on screen. I'm not too sure if it was cut or not, as in I don't know if they actually shot it and cut it or if they never actually brought this to the filming point when it was time to shoot it. I'm gonna talk about what happened originally and how it would have made the reveal a thousand times better. Well, maybe not a thousand times better, but just a lot more shocking and yet somewhat still satisfying and not just a, well, duh, because it was like dangled and painted in front of us so well from the opening scene up until the reveal it was like oh wow it's that person we're going to talk about all of that yes there will be spoilers in the video so if you don't want to know who the killer is then you shouldn't be watching we're going to talk about how this all could have been different if a very specific scene regarding how john labatt and maxine's first meeting should have gone down versus the cut we actually got so john labatt and maxine there was a clip released for it and everything we know they met at this fancy restaurant i think where he invited her told him or told maxine to meet him here called her by her real last name which is miller and i'm just gonna pick up where some of the dialogue went in that conversation and just go from how this should have gone versus the cut we got so there is a point where maxine is like it ain't about or john was like to maxine it ain't about money and maxine goes everything is about money and then he goes on about how for a couple of whores like you and me, maybe so, but not for my employer, you can't buy your way out of retribution. And then here's the thing. He slides an envelope across the table to her. Now in the movie, I don't know if it was an envelope or just a piece of paper, but on the envelope, you, we see the 166 Starlight Drive, which of course is, ended, is the house, the finale, the mansion in which the film occurs in later on. He tells her to show up at this location later. And then John Labatt says to her, if you don't, you'll never work in this town again. Obviously a joking reference to the saying that goes around in Hollywood. Then John says, personally, I don't really care what you do. My check clears either way, but I wouldn't recommend it. My employer is a very powerful man. Don't play chicken with him. And then he also says this, I'd hate for that lost film of yours to wind up all over the nightly, nightly news. Contrary to popular belief, there is such a thing as bad press. He then taps the envelope on the table and says, just ask your daddy. Now, again, for those of you who have seen the film, he does not say just ask your daddy in the movie. Then what happens is, of course, as he gets up to leave, Maxine picks up the envelope and inside of this envelope, is a newspaper article from 1979. So for those of you who are like, well, what was Critical Overlord talking about when it comes to the fact that I said something else happened in 19, 1979? So within this envelope, there would have been a newspaper clipping that said, disgraced televangelist commits suicide. Now, obviously that's her father, who again is named Ernest Miller. He committed suicide in 1979. And then below the headline that she would have read, it would have talked about the fact that this man was being sought after for his for his con like ways and for just for being a shady person. So the newspaper clipping would have revealed to us that her father allegedly because we know he didn't do that because he ended up being the killer committed suicide in 1979. That was the other event. Now, why do I think that was such a crucial thing that should have been kept in? Well, for one, if they're dangling it, dangling it in our face this much, and then you put this bombshell revelation on us that he actually died in 1979, it then raises the question. Well, if it's not her dad, as I've been led to think, who is John driving around? Who is his employer? There's no way he would just say, just ask your daddy if her daddy is the killer and then ultimately of course the, the daddy is the killer because Ernest ended up revealing himself later on in the third act they should have kept that in because it would have worked so much better by raising suspicion making you doubt what you are believing and for some people they would have been convinced that hey I can't be right because it says right here that he killed himself now some people would have been like eh that's probably a fake out but it's just the little writing tidbit of it all would have made the reveal a lot much more engaging, would have made it a lot less 
dull and hollow because of the fact that you at least are playing up the whodunit aspect of it. You're making me doubt what I'm believing. You're not just telling me it's this person in such an obvious fashion and then forcing me, not forcing me, but I'm having to then sit through 60 minutes of runtime to get through to the obvious endpoint that I knew was coming. This would have been such a better reveal if they had kept that in. Why they decided to cut it, I do not know. It was just the simplest thing that could have made this a whole lot better. Because then by the time he revealed himself in that third act, everybody would have been like, oh my gosh, but they said you died. And again, I know it, not, it would not have been legitimately everybody. But reducing it down to the fact of now without that, you just have an opening scene where we literally see him interacting with his daughter, where we don't see him, but we hear his voice. And then I have to wait all the way through until the reveal to get to the obvious revelation that it is him. And there's so many other instances in the movie that tell me it's him. He's watching Maxine dance at one point and he's visibly angry. And it's obvious that this is like some sort of rage he's taking personal, indicating to me that that is her father who does not like what he is seeing his daughter do with her life. He does not like that. He does not like that Hollywood has stolen his daughter from him and directed her away from the path of Christ, as he puts it. So if you would have just simply kept this little detail in the dinner sequence between her and Labatt, several viewers would have been like, wait, but if the dad's dead, then who is his employer? And then on top of that, John himself is bragging about just ask your daddy. It's it's almost in a way of it's so obvious that it can't be there. They could have literally had a Billy Loomis type of effect, if you will. The way Billy Loomis was so in your face. But then we had a fake out with Billy Loomis. And ultimately, we were right. It was Billy Loomis. That could have been what you got here with Ernest. But instead, it just felt very hollow, uneventful and duh, because you didn't do anything to shake up the process along the way. It was just a complete flat line with no ups and downs. It was just a clear path to earnest. God, they should have kept this in. It's just not the same movie without it. If they would have kept this in, it would have enhanced Ernest's reveal a thousand times. I stand by that. Let me know what y'all think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notifications. Your name is the video. In the description, I'll have links on my social media accounts. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews I'm going to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.